So my session today here is about edge compute and explaining what is actually behind the hype. Before I go into that, two quick questions. First, who has heard of edge compute before? Everybody, huh? Cool. So who in here knows exactly what edge compute is? Anybody? Two people? Okay. So a few people raise their hands. I'd like to challenge you. After the session, please talk to me and tell me if any of this, what you expected before, has changed now. Okay? Let's see if our opinions change a little bit. All right. So here are our key learning objectives. First, I want to talk a little bit about the history of compute itself and how it relates to edge compute. Then what and very importantly, where edge compute is, the key drivers for edge compute, a couple of use case examples of where you actually need edge compute, and then a couple of drivers for how what Cisco is doing around edge compute in general. Now, edge compute is the latest one on the hype train, in my opinion. So we had AI, ML, blockchain, and now it's edge compute. And there's a lot of different people who are talking about it. A couple of quotes I have in here. One example is edge computing will overtake cloud computing in 2025. That's a huge statement. That's an interesting one, but I really like these two, because one says, by 2024, market will be 28 billion. The other one says, by 2025, so a year later, market will be 3 billion. I don't know how they got to 3.24, but at least one of these two will be horribly wrong. Quite likely both, but that got me thinking, why? Why is there such a difference in understanding of what edge compute is? Where, where is this coming from? I want to take a few steps back, and first explain where is compute coming from and then how it relates to edge compute. So this is probably not news to most of you guys, but just to do a bit of a history lesson here. We started with compute in the mainframe area, around 45, and I saw around a million dollars is a good price for a mainframe at that time. Later on, we built networks. So the ethernet came up around the 1980s and we had the first diskless terminals where we then decentralized the compute. Now we had the PC, so the uh, the price per compute got lower and lower and lower, and in the 90s, people started having their own personal computers. Later on, there's this trend of thin clients coming up. Gigabit Ethernet, it's very easy, it's very cheap, so therefore, we can add thin clients to centralize our compute again. Then around 2005 was the first year that laptops outsold desktops. And as you can see, obviously, compute got a lot cheaper per compute performance. So there's basically a race between what's better, the network or the compute. In 2010, we had cloud computing. And since about a couple of years, we have this term edge computing. But we now have Raspberry Pis for a couple of dollars. So computing got a lot cheaper over time, and we got a lot smaller pieces over time. But the concept of centralized compute down here and decentralized compute up here has been around for a long, long time. So what I can see from this little bit of a history out view here is that there's a couple of key learnings, including, you get the slides afterwards, don't worry, uh, including compute cost reduces over time. So if you remember Moore's law, it reduces every year by half. So therefore, the, the amount of ICs double every two years. So therefore, it also decreases the price over time. Uh, the reduced compute cost allows decentralization and Basically, edge compute is a new synonym, synonym for decentralized compute. It's been around for a long time. Now, as the compute goes down, compute cost goes down, the compute, I'm going to coin this term now, compute edginess increases. Now, there is not a very strict definition for what edge compute is, at least I haven't found one yet. But I got a quote here from the guy called uh, Dr. Karim Arabi, who said, all computing outside cloud happening at the edge of the network, that is edge compute. Now, the second half is a little bit hard to define because the edge of the network is a relative term. My edge, my SP's edge, or the ISP's backbone's edge. There's different definitions of where the edge is, but outside the cloud or outside the data center, that is a bit more defined. So. I have a little bit of a game prepared now. It's a riddle. I'm going to do the first one. So here, I want to play the game, is it edge compute or not? And using the definition from the last slide, I'm going to start here, is a use case. The use case is that service providers want to add servers to their regional data center. Okay? Now, is it compute? Of course, they want to add servers. 
is it in the cloud? Well, it's their regional data center, not their main data center, so it's not in their main headquarter. So therefore, yes, it is edge compute, right? So, next question. If a service provider wants to add servers next to their 5G cell towers, something that we hear very often from the big providers, what do you guys think? Is it edge compute? Yes, yes, I see some people nodding. Yes, of course. It is compute, it's not in the cloud, and therefore it is edge compute. Going further down the stack, let's say if we have routers that are able to host Docker containers, like our IOX containers from Cisco. Is it compute, guys? Yes, of course. Is it in the cloud? No, it's in a router. Yes, it is edge compute. Going further to the access layer, IoT gateways that aggregate sensor data in a roadside cabinet, like if you have a traffic roadside cabinet where you get data from the DSRC radios, from the traffic, from the weather station, and you pre-aggregate this information to just send and aggregate the data northbound. Classic use case. What do you guys think? Is it edge compute? Of course it is edge compute. <coughs> Going further down, if you have a camera that now doesn't just stream the video feed, but does analytics on the camera, facial recognition, number plate recognition, people counting, vehicle counting, you name it, is that edge compute? Yes, people call it edge compute, of course. Going even further, let's say we have a temperature sensor that's not just an analog one, but one that gives me a five minute average instead. Every five minutes, it gives me a temperature value. Is that edge compute? It computes in the average temperature. Where do you draw the line? Just to make this point now very, very clear, if you have a microwave that is regulating the power based on the food's temperature, it is computing and has an IC in the microwave. Is this edge compute? Yeah, it is computing. It's not in a data center. It is edge compute. So here is the challenge with edge compute. It is an extremely broad definition. And this is why people have these very vastly different understandings and therefore estimations of how big the edge compute market is going to be. Because it depends on what is edge compute to you. So. I want to try to nail it, the definition down a little bit more. First, this here is now our normal stack of, of an IoT or an industrial IoT deployment. We have our actual end devices. We might or might not have an IoT appliance in front of the device. We have a routeway, router or a gateway that connects us to the internet. Let's say we have a cellular connection, so we have a cell tower next, then a regional data center from a service provider, and a cloud data center. Does this make sense, flow-wise? from left to right all the way? Okay. Now, if it depends who you asked, who you asked where edge compute is. The thing vendors, the camera vendors, the temperature control vendors, they'll say, edge compute is here. I built edge compute. The IoT appliances claim it here. Network vendors, of course, claim it here. And the service providers also say, we have edge compute next to our cell towers in our data centers. So everybody claims to have edge compute. But there are couple of very important differences between these locations. And in my opinion, the most important one is the network connectivity. On this part here, you usually have a LAN. You have either a Wi-Fi, let's say, dot one, uh, with uh, 11AX connectivity. You might have a gigabit Ethernet cable. That is usually a very reliable and very cheap link. An Ethernet cable doesn't cost much. From here to here, this is the most critical link in this chain because this is the last mile from the service provider. This introduces the biggest latency from the beginning and it's the most expensive one for the end customer. This is your 5G or 4G uplink. And afterwards, once you're in the cell tower, the service provider has fiber backbone. They have hundreds of, gigabyte, uh, of gigabit of traffic there. They have redundant links. So therefore, from here on, you're good at least from a throughput point of view. Latency is a different story, but throughput is really safe. So this is why, in my understanding, or my opinion, or let's start here, the industry definition of edge compute is across all of these. In my opinion, if we do not exclude edge devices, every single electrical device is an edge compute device these days. I have a hard time figuring out what electrical device doesn't have an IC these days. A microwave, a washing machine, a freaking ironing iron, for an ironing board, they all have some IC capabilities, some compute is integrated there, and therefore it's very hard to draw the line of which ones have edge compute and which ones have just more functionality. So this is why I want to exclude this part, it just makes it very messy otherwise. 
The service providers, they do have edge compute. They can claim that for sure. But in my opinion, or what I've seen so far, in most cases, it's not generic edge compute. It is actually a content distribution network. They want to make sure that we can serve our favorite cat videos or the viral GIF as fast as possible. So they use Akamai and other solutions to serve content faster. But it's not, in many cases, generic edge compute that you can program yourself. So the true edge, what I call it at least, is before the WAN. This is the most important part. And this is then on these more generically capable devices where you can host a Docker container, an LXC container. This is where you can do whatever you want to based on your IoT requirements. And here, just for reference, I have a bit of a distance chart here as well. And I normally like to measure distance in kilometers or meters. I'm a metrics guy. In this case, though, I would like to do a different metric. So I'm going to measure the distance in time. In this case, the time it takes for the speed of light to go across, because electrical signals go in the speed of light. So we can see here in the local things, it's below microseconds. We have millisecond latency here. And this part, again, the WAN link, is where we introduce the biggest latency in most deployments. Again, it depends. If your, if your IoT deployment is right next to the service provider data center, it doesn't count. But on average, this is where you introduce the most latency at first. Now, this is where edge compute is. Now, why do people want to use edge compute? There are a couple of main reasons. Let's start here. Biggest one, of course, latency. Latency is an important one. And by now, the requirements for latency are bigger than what physics allow us. I'll show in an example in a moment what I mean by that. But latency is the most important one, of course. Resiliency availability is another very important one because there's some good use cases for that as well. Regulatory compliance, not a very commonly thought of one. I'll give some examples of why we have this on this chart as well. Bandwidth cost is another good reason why. However, bandwidth is kind of unlimited. With enough money, you could put any bandwidth you want to. There's no reason why we can't put a dark fiber connection to every square meter of this world and have it all backhauled to a service provider. Technically possible. Doesn't make sense. Is expensive, but physically possible. And then the last reason I heard is because I want to. So some guys in the OT field, especially so in the manufacturing areas, they just like to have full control of their things. Therefore, that's my, my fifth reason here, just for the fun of it. All right. I'm going to give you a couple of use case examples now. First one is on latency. Latency is very often required for security applications. So let's take the autonomous vehicle. You guys all know what autonomous vehicles are. Let's say if a Tesla, for example, sees a person walking in front of it, there is no time to backhaul all that video feed of all the eight cameras in HD around it to a data center, evaluate it, send it back, and then apply the brakes. Doesn't work. It takes way too long. Huge safety concern. So therefore, this is an extreme classic use case where it has to slam on the brakes as soon as possible. Therefore, latency is not an option. It is important. Similarly, the infrastructure has also very strict requirements. So we now talk to some of the departments of transportation, that's what DOT stands for, who now build up roadside infrastructure to get ready for autonomous vehicles. Meaning they have radios on the sites where they then realize from the cars what's coming in, and they sometimes have to push notifications out as well. And here's a little math riddle for you. One of the requirements I heard is that a department of transportation has a requirement to have the data in and out of the system in 15 milliseconds. 15 milliseconds, okay? And now, let's do this math riddle here. Can a cloud in California, I mean a data center in California, host a Department of Transportation in Florida? To give you some tips here to make it much easier, the speed of light is around 5 microseconds per kilometer, and east coast to west coast is around 5,000 kilometers. So, can you shout out a number? How long is the round trip latency from east coast to west coast and back? Anybody? What's the number? 25? Almost. 25 is one way, it's 50 return. So if the requirement is below 15, no, it is not possible to do this use case just based on physics. Not talking products, not talking anything else, just based on the speed of light. It is not possible to fulfill this requirement without doing a local, at least a regional data center in the state. Now go over resiliency and availability. For some people, it is also security mission critical one. Let's take here a refinery. A refinery that has a gas leakage detection system. And if a detection or if a gas is somewhere detected, it has to shut down the valves 
and send an alert out so that the employees can escape as fast as possible. Now, imagine there's a critical situation. Imagine there's a fire, there's an explosion happening, and the explosion takes out the internet bandwidth or the internet link. And this wouldn't trigger anymore. It would be a huge risk. So therefore, for mission-critical applications, it is very often required to have it independent from the WAN. Therefore, it has to be able to close the valves without internet access. So this is a good, ex good use case for edge compute as well. Not as life-threatening, we have, for example, retailers as well. A retailer who wants to drive a point of sale. For them, it is business critical. They need uptime 100% because if they can't process credit card transaction and they can't sell their goods anymore, they could go out of business. So therefore, they say, if I have a flaky WAN here, I would rather have a local point of sale on my local edge compute device in my store to process this payment. All right, regulatory compliance. Here's an interesting one. Uh, so you guys probably know the EU's General Data Protection Regulation, where they're obliged to report leaks of personal data. We can't uh, store or backhaul video information in many cases. And therefore, what I've heard customers do now is they use edge compute as an appliance before the cameras to get the video feed out, depersonalize the data before they backhaul it, or just get metadata out of it. So a camera doesn't give a video feed out. A camera just does, for example, a, ve a people counting or a vehicle counting for the traffic center. This way you get around this regulation. Very interesting one here as well is from Canada. Canada is, I guess you guys, know, or you guys all know what and where Canada is, but just to give you some background of what happened there in the past. A couple of decades ago, they had um, some disease spreading over the water supplies. So there was a it was actually a very severe one, and some people died from the sickness. And afterwards, so they put this Canadian Water Act into place, where they now have to measure the water quality in many, many locations, in number 3,000, across the state at all times to make sure that no of the water bodies are contaminated. Now, as you know, Canada is very spread out, so therefore in the remote locations, they have sometimes very flaky WAN connections as well. It might be a satellite backhaul or something else as well. So what they say now is, we don't want to rely on the WAN to transport this back, but if we ever don't have the edge data, we have to explain to the regulatories why we don't have it. We have to like write a report, sorry, we missed data set from 11 to 12 p.m. that day because internet was down. So they don't want to write these reports anymore. So therefore they say, we now use edge compute to store the data locally as well and then backhaul it. So this makes them relocatory re compliant at all times as well. Um, next one, of course, bandwidth cost. It's one of the more common ones. And I had an interesting customer talk to me here. So what they said was it was a city who wanted to deploy cameras across the entire city. I said, we have power on our power poles, but we don't have network connectivity. But we have now LTE, right? It's super high bandwidth, it's super easy. And now they realize afterwards that one HD camera actually creates about 1,300 gigabyte of data per month. I mean, I'm sure the SP gave them a decent deal, but no matter how good the deal is, this amount of data you don't want to backhaul over LTE. That just doesn't work out. So therefore, the SP backhaul cost became prohibitive at some point. And then they added edge compute to pre-aggregate the data, and only if there's motion or only if there's like a gunshot detection, again, US. So if there's a gunshot happening, only then they will backhaul the video from a few meet, uh, minutes before and then afterwards as well. So this is one use case. Um, the next one here is predictive maintenance of a remote machine. For that, you need a lot of sensor data. Uh, vibration, current, temperature, various variables are important there. But if your sensor now gives you the value every millisecond, you don't want to backhaul all of that. Because, for example, if you get temperature values every millisecond, it gets very boring, very, very boring over time. So I don't want to see 40 degrees Celsius a thousand times a minute or a thousand times a second and backhaul all that over my link. So therefore, with edge compute, we can define here thresholds or averages, and therefore we can compress all of this data before we send it over the WAN, so we only use it when once it's actually useful. And the last one I have here is my little fun one, because I want to. So in many cases, when we talk to manufacturing guys, they want to have full control over their machine. They want to be independent on from IT. They don't trust the IT folks. So therefore, they want to make sure even if the IT guys screwed up in the data center, their system keeps running. Therefore, all functions of a machine should be contained within the machine itself. And therefore, 
security and uh, availability are top of mind for them, so they want to have an edge compute device on their machine that just does some machine operation there. All right, so a couple of guiding principles we have employed. First of all, security is a must-have foundation, and this is around secure products, meaning all communications are encrypted, data at rest is encrypted, and so on and so forth, but also we have security products like what we just launched today, what I launched earlier as well over there with the Centurio, uh, the Cyber Vision application as well. So this is a big starting point. Then we say the network is a natural aggregation point because all traffic goes through the network anyway, and we are the last point before you cross the WAN. So therefore, it does make sense to put IOX on our gateway so you can run edge compute applications on our gateways directly. Manageability is very important because most IoT deployments at some point have to scale out massively, like the 3,000 water stations in Canada. Somebody has to manage them at scale. You can't do it as one-offs. So therefore, our tools are important here. Standardization is very important as well so that we are better at interoperability. The world is still new to IoT and there's a lot of stuff where we have to be interoperable with other pieces. So therefore, using standards like MQTT for transport or Docker for edge compute deployment are important. That's why we introduce these in our products as well. And last but not least, an open ecosystem is important as well. This is why we have now our IVT program in Cisco, where we can now certify third-party applications running on IOX so that partners can build their own applications to run on our gateways and certify them as well. Because only that way we can scale out to all the use cases that are out there. All right, quick summary. Edge Compute has been around for a long time. IoT and lowered, uh, IoT and lowered compute cost increases the edginess. Uh, it's a very loosely defined term, and a lot of people have different understandings of it. And yeah, the use cases are very various, ubiquitous, and there's many different drivers for it. With that, one call to action. If you guys have any cool edge compute use cases, feel free to share them with me. It's my Twitter, LinkedIn, and email as well. And I'm happy to post all of these slides into the related DevNet uh, WebEx Teams room as well if you want to. That's what I have. Again, always please fill your uh, session survey out so we know what we're doing. I'll be in the WebEx team room as well. Just come up to me after the session. I can talk about it more if you're interested. We have a couple of cool demos in the world of solution around IoT where we show also some IOX applications as well as cyber vision and edge intelligence which are playing right into this edge compute use case. And with that, thank you for your attention. <laughs>